so hello everybody welcome back to another video and in today's video we are going to see how you can set up mongoose with next.js so in your next.js project you can set up mongoose and then you can use it where, uh, as you want it so before going ahead i assume you have experience with next.js and mongoose both of them so that you can use them in your project right so first of all right now i have this very simple and bare bones next.js project which does absolutely nothing like it's just the uh demo default project that comes when you run create next app so what it does is nothing and we're going to write all the code obviously and we're not going to change all you know the css and all that stuff so let's get started first of all we can go to terminal and new terminal because we have to install mongoose so right over here the first thing you need to do is install mongoose as a normal dependency as you do in node.js so i'm going to say npm i mongoose all right i means install uh, shorthand for install now i'm using npm you can also use yarn or pnpm if you want but i'm using npm so once mongoose will install after it's done we have to set it up so the way I try to do it is that I have a file where I have the function that connects to the database and then the other things like models and controllers are the same thing as you know a normal next a normal node.js with express works so first of all what I like to do is I like to create a folder called utils and in that one I like to create a file called connect dot uh, js or you know you can say it's connect db dot js whatever you want to call it i like to call it connect for simplicity or let's just name this connect db so let's just say connect connect mongo dot js all right so that you know it says now once we have named the file we have to create a function so now if i want to connect to the database what i need to do is uh, let's simply say export First of all, let's just create a function. So I'm going to say connect mongo. That's what I'm going to call it. And it takes in nothing. It's a simple arrow function. And this function is going to run the connect method on mongoose. So we first of all import mongoose from mongoose. That's automatically imported. And basically, let's name this. Let's make this an asynchronous function. So we are using async await here, not dot then. All right. Now, once we're done that, we can simply say, you know, it's an arrow function so we can take this out and we can say mongoose dot so once uh, we got the connect method up and running we have to pass in a uri all right so the uri is pretty much a very simple thing so the uri that you need to pass in you can directly pass it in but it's not safe so what i like to do is i like to go ahead and create a dot env dot local file in next.js project and i can simply call it you know mongo underscore uri you can call it whatever you want so for the mongo uri you can you can also use mongodb atlas if you want for the demo i am going to use the local mongodb that i have installed so i can simply go ahead and say mongodb colon slash slash local host port 27017 i believe that's the one and slash the database name so let's just call it mongoose underscore nextjs underscore demo okay cool so once you have added this as an environment variable you can simply go ahead and pass it in so i can simply say process dot env dot mongo underscore uri and if you are using next.js and if you are using typescript uh, make sure to put a bang after this one to make sure you know uh, it to tell typescript that hey this environment variable exists right now it won't work because it's javascript once you've done that we have to export this so let's simply export connect or we can even do this export const all right as simple as that once we are done with that we can go ahead and create a model so we can so as a normal express app i simply like to create a folder called models and then let's just call this you know test model dot js so now you can simply go ahead and do your own thing it's just straightforward and i'm going to fast forward this part because everyone knows how it will work okay so here we are 
now what I've done here is I've created a test schema you know with new schema and I've imported schema model and models from mongoose now you might be wondering well why would I import models because in a normal express app we don't generally do this we just use uh, mongoose.model so I'll show you why this is important so for now let's just create the scheme uh, let's just create the model directly so I'm gonna say const test is going to be a model that's how we do things let's call this test and the schema is gonna be test schema alright now why do we use models see when you create a model alright so when we create a model called test it basically creates a new model and with next.js whenever we run this file and with next.js this file gets run again and again and again whenever we import it and use it so a new model is instantiated every now and then which is not good and it will throw us an error for that now if you want to avoid that weird error that you know gives you no context about how to solve it you can simply go ahead and say you know check if there is an existing model called you know for test then it's well and good if there is no model for test then we create one so how do we do that this and uh, this models is basically you know provided by mongoose for existing models so we can simply check for models dot test so we create this variable test as you know either models dot test and if this is undefined or null so basically if this does not exist we can say or create a new model so at the first go it will go ahead and create a new model of course but if you know this exists then it's just going to use directly this one and this is what you have to do with next.js now once we're done with that we can simply export default test that's what I like to do so once we export default test this is the model uh, we're done with it absolutely done so we have created our test model now let's go ahead and uh, we can go ahead and create a controller but I would not like to go on that let's jump on to how we can make it work so if I go to pages now in the pages we have the folder called API now you can run your node backend code only in the API folder remember this is your front end this index.js that you see this part is all your front end so you cannot run mongoose code inside of this part so you have to use the API folder or you can have a separate node server if you want so right over here let's just create a simple one folder and I'm gonna call this test alright now this folder is gonna be like slash API slash test and then slash whatever we want so slash test let's just say we wanna uh, create dot js alright so you wanna or let's just name this instead of create let's just name this add so we add a test alright as simple as that and this is going to be let's just copy it from here so we export default a function you know you can call it anyone anything you want I, I'm gonna call this add test so this is just like uh, an express route you have the request and response and you can you know uh, return the response as you want for better typing you know for you know right now if you see request and response are of type any which is why you know I prefer TypeScript because it gives you type because it gives you the power of types uh, that's why there is autocomplete so just for you know it's optional if you want you can do that I personally like to do this this way if it's a JavaScript file this is how you add JS doc comments so you know you can simply literally add uh, types in JavaScript so for the request we are gonna call this next API request that's what it's called and it's going to import it directly let's copy this and we can paste it and this is going to be next API response that's what it's called and now if you take a look you know it gives you uh, a type which provides you autocomplete so if I say res.json it gives you my it gives autocomplete to me so once we are done with all of this now let's work on how we can create a document so if you are used next.js API routes you know it's really simple you can simply get the request body so first of all let's just say const um, uh, we want to get something from request dot body so for the test if you look we have a name and we have an email both of these things if we take a look at the model alright so the email is going to be unique and name is just going to be optional and all that 
So we got name and email. That's what's gonna pass. That's what's gonna get passed into the body. And now uh, here comes the fun part. This function is by default not asynchronous. So we want to make it asynchronous. We can simply pass in async here. Now we're gonna connect to the database. Then we're gonna create a new model. And then we are going to simply and easily just return the response. So, uh, so first of all, let's work on connecting the database. We have this connect Mongo file, which you know exports a function. Uh, let's actually export default it, you know, for consistency purposes. So connect Mongo like so. All right, as simple as that. It's it's very straightforward. Now this function we can import it directly. So first of all, let's import this function. So I'm going to say import connect mongo from dot dot slash dot dot slash and dot dot slash again we got utils slash connect mongo and we can go ahead and say connect mongo now remember this returns a promise now if we now if this returns a promise we have to await it so before creating a new document in the database we have to connect to the database first and for that reason we have to await this so basically you know first this line will get executed so we'll connect to the database and then the rest of it is going to get executed so our, our so our app will first of all connect to the database and for you know and to and to visualize this properly we can simply console.log connecting to mongo and we can duplicate this and we can move this down there we can call this connected to mongo all right as simple as that so when it's connecting it's going to console log this then it's going to connect and then it's going to log this so once you have connected to the database now it's time to create a new now it's time to create a new document in the database and that's also really straightforward if you have used mongodb so first of all let's import test from dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash models slash test model as simple as that and we can go ahead and say um, let's actually console log so so let's actually console log this I'm gonna say creating document all right so when you're creating a document we can simply go ahead and say const let's call this test is equal to await test dot create and we have to pass in the doc uh, you know all this stuff so we can simply pass in the request dot body let's just pass that in we don't need any other thing so you know there's gonna be the name and email obviously now, I'm not doing any validate now I'm not doing any type of validation here but you must have some sort of validation to check if the name and email exist or not for simplicity purposes I'm not doing any validation stuff let's also have one more console log so that the document is created and and once it's done we can simply return as a response so I can say rest.json uh, test that's what we call it that's it that's our API route and basically it's going to connect to the database and then it's going to create a document and then it's going to return back to you all right so once we're done with the code let's test it out so right over in the terminal I can say npm run dev to start the development server of Next.js, and right now we don't have this connected to the front end, so we are just going to check it uh, with Postman. So Postman, I don't have Postman, but in VS Code you can go ahead and install this extension called Thunder Client, which is like Postman integrated inside of VS Code. So we can go ahead and create a new request right over here, and we can enter the URL, which is HTTP: slash slash localhost port 3000 and right over here the the path to this is slash api slash test and slash add as simple as that so we can go ahead and say api test add and remember this is going to be a post request and we have to pass in the body so in the body i can pass in the json content so what we need first is the name so let's say name is going to be you know test one and then we have to pass in the email so email is going to be test at test.com now let's open up the terminal and you see if i hit send it should show us the logs also so if i hit send here we go so we get back 
response as test you know name email and the id of course then you see it's connecting to mongo then it connected to mongo then it created the creating and created document so if i go to mongodb compass that i have open here you see right now uh, there is nothing inside of here uh, so if i refresh this you'll see that we have this new database created if i click on this we got a new tests created this uh, is a collection and in this collection we have this new document and that mongoose does automatically for us let's try this one more time and this time the same data because the email i want it to be the same but it can't be the same so let's hit send you see it says uh, it gives us an error mongo server error you know duplicate key error collection all all that stuff and we have to handle that error on our back end of course so let's try to do that so we can simply go ahead and you know add a try catch block so i can say try and well let's put everything inside of try and let's add a catch where we catch the error and right over here we can simply go ahead and say response.json error all right let's put it like this actually let's call this error fully you know so that we have no confusion whatsoever and that's it also let's just console log the error so console.log the error so right over here we see because we had set the email to be unique true that's why it won't mongoose won't let us create another document with the same email so now if i try to send it it will throw an error to me so error is basically index and uh, because you know that's this that's that's all so that's how you work with mongoose and nextjs also once we created this let's just rename this to test2 and this is going to be test2 as well and now let's try to send it and here it is it's added let's go to compass and let's refresh this and here we go now let's go ahead and get this up and running on the front end so you can call this route from your front end you can simply go ahead and say slash api remember you don't need to call the local host part from the front end you can simply pass in the slash api test add make a post request pass in the data and then that's all so call this route from the front end now i'm just going to write out the next year's front end really quickly so that you know you don't have to so your time doesn't get wasted okay so what i did is i simply added a new function uh, called create test it's an asynchronous function it generates a random number it generates a random number at first then it sends a request to slash api slash test slash add with a content type of application json as you know in the headers and then in the body we stringify this 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 object you know the name is going to be test and the random number that we generate the email is going to be test random number Know, whatever and then you know we convert that to json and we console log it so this happens when we click on this button create test button and let me demonstrate that to you so if i go back to the browser so if i go to localhost port 3000 you will notice you know so this is how our ui looks like i removed every other link on the page so this is the fun uh, this is the button called create test now if i were to click it it is actually going to create the test we can go ahead and look at that so in the logs just when i let's click on this and so i forgot to add the method post which is really important if you are passing in the body so now we can go ahead and create test let's click on this button and you see connecting to mongo and creating document created document and this is going to be on the console so if i go ahead and inspect it uh, let's look at the console and you're going to see that we have an object with all that stuff you know 312 let's go back here and let's refresh so you see here it is now once we're done with that let's go ahead and try fetching the documents because that's also important right so if i so in next js what i would like to do is i'm just going to create a function i hope you know about this it's get it's called get server side props all right so it's called get server side server side props 
and basically this is a, an asynchronous function that you know with the help of this one you can fetch some data on the server so on node which is really really useful so like if I go to the API route this and this are the same so this is running on the back end and it will provide you the props you want so I'm simply going to do this so I'm so you can run the same code that you can run here so let's copy and paste this try catch right over here and let's go ahead and also copy and paste these imports all right once I have once we're done with all that we can go down so we connect to the monger we connect to the database then we don't want to create the document we want to fetch the document so I'm just going to say fetching documents and you know fetched documents all right uh, we don't want to create one we can simply go ahead and say const tests now this is vanilla mongoose code await test dot and yeah in the imports let's uh, remove these dot dot slash because we are not in the subdirectory so this is how the imports are going to look like and then right over here we can say test dot and then we can find and that's all so it's going to fetch all the documents and instead of returning it's returning json in this function you have to return the props and you can say tests all right so this is how it is going to look like and if there's an error we are going to simply console log the error and we're going to return so instead of rest.json we have to return we're going to say not found not found to be true all right so it's just going to return 404 page and we can go ahead and you know this this props property this gives you tests so you, you get access to this tests in your page so you can go ahead and simply grab this like so so once you've got tests and we can go ahead and you know display the tests as we want so I'm just going to really quick do that and show it to you and so we map over the test array and we get access to each test we set the key to id and then we you know the name and email let's go right over here it gives us an error for now because we have to refresh our page and you will see so this is a very common thing in nextjs that when you return from get server side props or you know static props whatever uh, because this this content that you get back is not sanitized properly because it contains date and all that uh, there's one trick that you have to do is that you have to simply go ahead and set this to tests so basically you have to json dot parse you have to first of all convert that to a string so this is the trick to get it working so first of all this is the normal json you first of all make it a string and after making it a string you pass it back so this is the way you have to do it and the save the file and then let's refresh one more time and you will be good to go so you see test one test two test three one two we now we can create one more test and we see you know it's done and if I reload you're gonna see test yeah 800 so that is how you set up mongoose with nextjs with a simple demo I hope you like it if it was helpful leave a like comment down below how it was helpful any suggestions if you want and finally thanks for watching mm -hmm.